So there are two things we're trying to achieve with the solar pool heaters. One, we want to be able to use the pool for more than three, three and a half months of the year. For example, like in April and May or later in fall in October, November, when the temperatures are still 95, 100, but the nights are cooler, the water temperature is at 65. And it can be really frustrating to not be able to use the pool on a hot day. So just to clarify, we're not trying to heat up the pool to be able to use in the middle of winter. And two, we want to be able to put these pool heaters away when we don't need them for example in the middle of winter or in the summer when the water is already pretty hot. So we researched and looked at a ton of designs and tried a few things and this is what we came up with. So this is basically the first design we had um, four feet long two by fours and I made a half lap joint in the middle put them together and then we just coiled the hose around and use some clamps to keep it in its position, which works, but um, here I wish it had a little bit more support underneath. So here is how it's set up. So we have the submersible pump, then we have the hose coming out of there, and it goes right, right into the coil. Now here we have a valve, so we can control the flow of the water going into the coil. So the flow isn't too fast, the water gets enough time to warm up as it goes through the hose here. And then behind this is the outlet of the hose. So that connects back here and goes straight into the pole. So it's a sunny day, it's about 80 degrees and this guy's been running for about an hour. And I wanted to measure the temperature and show you how that works. So this right here, the, the temperature of the pool water is about 70 degrees. Now I'm going to get the water from here. And this water here is almost at 92 degrees. So the concept works, but in order to keep the temperature of the water coming out high enough, we have to have it barely at a trickle. If we increase the water flow, the water doesn't have enough time to heat up inside the coil and the temperature drops. So we think that if we add another coil to this, we should be able to get the flow high enough, at the same time get the hot temperature as well. This time we actually planned a little better. We got some pressure treated 2x4s and cut them down to 3 fit pieces. We just laid it out on the floor and spaced them out evenly and then attached two boards across to make the grid. Now to coil up the hose, we left about two foot of the hose free and then we wrapped the rest of it on the grid and attached using clamps. This was the longest process, but it was also a fun family project. There was no pattern to the clamps. We just added clamps as we went along wherever we felt we needed more support. I have a link to all the supplies we used in the description below. So once it was built, it was time to connect this to the other heater coil and see how it works. We just connected the outlet of the first heater to the inlet of the second. 
and then we connected the output hose to the new heater. So it's about an 82 degree day and we've had these two running in tandem for about an hour. So we're gonna check the temperature now. So we're gonna pick up water from the pool and we're gonna measure that. The temperature is about 70 degrees. So now we're just gonna get the water out of the outlet here. And the temperature is almost 110 degrees. So we do get about a 40 degree temperature increase on a nice clear day, which is awesome. And the water flow is a lot higher as well. But I think we would probably need one more of these uh, coils to get the water flow higher and heat up the pool even faster. We did make a few other changes, like we spray painted the clamps and the hose in a matte black, so the reflection of, of the coil was at a minimum. We also tried to use aluminum sheets to try to concentrate the sun onto the coils. Here is a cost breakdown for each of the coils. The lumber was about $15 for the pressure treated version. Uh, the 100 foot hose was $35 and the clamps were $10. So for about $60, we were able to build each coil. In addition to that, we have the pool pump, which is $40 and some extra hoses and valves, which total about $25. Now, if you're curious if it really added pool days to our year, be sure to check out the blog post linked in the description below where I will be updating as time goes by. Until then, watch these other project videos and don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss out any other projects.